discussion on the general surgical considerations for anterior ankle arthroscopy. In this video, we will cover patient positioning, operating room setup, and portal placement, both standard and accessory. Let's first look at the applications for performing ankle arthroscopy. Glazebrook and colleagues performed a comprehensive review of the literature for indications for ankle arthroscopy. These include, but are not limited to, impingement, both bony and soft tissue, osteochondral lesions, ankle arthrodesis, loose bodies, ankle instability, septic arthritis, arthrofibrosis, ankle osteoarthritis, synovitis, and fractures. They looked at levels of evidence and whether certain indications were supported by the literature and made recommendations based on this. For the purpose of this video, we will cover these specific topics in more detail. An example of bony impingement is an anterior tibiotalar spur caused by chronic ankle instability, secondary to blunt trauma, or a combination of both. Soft tissue impingement, commonly seen in the anterolateral portion of the ankle, can have many causes. Impingement of the distal fascicle of the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament can cause abrasions on the talus. Osteochondral lesions of the talus are a pathologic condition that affect the articular cartilage and subchondral bone. Arthroscopic ankle fusion can be indicated for many reasons, including for patients who have symptomatic end-stage ankle arthritis and those who are unresponsive to conservative treatment. Loose bodies can be associated with other pathology. Here, a grasper is used to remove a piece of cartilage. Anterior and anterolateral ankle impingement is one of the most recognized indications for ankle arthroscopy. Techniques to assess and treat ankle instability can be performed for the assessment and stabilization of the ATFL for arthroscopic diagnosis of syndesmosis instability and assessment of adequate reduction and assessment of deltoid instability. Septic arthritis of the ankle joint is a rare but serious disease. Arthrofibrosis occurs due to adhesions or contracture of the joint. Post-traumatic synovitis is one example and is pictured here during debridement. Arthroscopic debridement for ankle osteoarthritis, or OA, as it is commonly referred to, shows mixed results in the literature but can be used. Arthroscopic synovectomy of the ankle is commonly performed. Finally, evaluate the extent of damage to the joint following a fracture. In this case, an unstable lateral malleolar and posterior malleolar fracture is visible on x-ray. Arthroscopy can assist with fracture reduction and debridement in the ankle. Evacuate the hematoma before arthroscopy to facilitate visualization and use either gravity or low pressure inflow to avoid excessive fluid extravasation. Indications for scoping ankle fractures have not been defined. Now, we'll move on to patient positioning, operating room setup, and standard and accessory portal placement. Based on surgeon preference, ankle arthroscopy is normally performed with the patient in the supine position. Typically, the patient is under general, spinal, or local anesthesia and has received perioperative antibiotics. The general anesthesia helps ensure maximum relaxation for the patient to ensure maximum distraction. A thigh support for the hip should be flexed approximately 45 degrees to 50 degrees proximal to the popliteal fossa to ensure there is no pressure on the neurovascular structures. A side post placed against the greater trochanter helps prevent external rotation of the leg. In most cases, a thigh tourniquet is placed on the proximal thigh. The use of distraction is debated. Distraction can be from gravity, manual, or distraction device. There are advantages and disadvantages to each option. Non-invasive traction applied to the foot for up to an hour with up to 135 newtons, which is 30 pounds of force, has been shown to allow safe visualization of the ankle. In addition to the shaver and fluid components involved in arthroscopy, the arthroscopy tower includes an imaging platform with camera, video, 
and light source. Now we'll move on to portal placements. Prior to making skin incisions and visualizing the ankle, identify relevant landmarks. The most used anterior portals are the anteromedial and anterolateral. The anterocentral portal is rarely used due to its proximity to neurovascular structures. Injury to the superficial perineal nerve is a known complication with anterior arthroscopy. It is recommended to mark out the surface anatomy of the nerve, which is usually visible with inversion of the foot and plantar flexion of the fourth toe. Keep in mind, the nerve is marked in inversion. Establish the portal in a neutral position. The nerve is known to move slightly laterally once the ankle is in this position. Distend the ankle joint with sterile fluid. The anteromedial portal is the primary viewing portal it should be established first at the soft spot just medial to the tibialis anterior tendon, but lateral to the saphenous vein at the level of the ankle joint. Then, establish the anterolateral portal under direct visualization, using a spinal needle to ensure proper angle. A small portal is established. This portal is just lateral to the peroneus tertius tendon, and in most cases, the superficial perineal nerve but medial to the lateral malleolus, again at the level of the joint. Regarding the structures at the ankle, we can see with this cross-section that the anteromedial portal is medial to the anterior tibial tendon. The anterolateral portal is just medial to the superficial perineal nerve, while the central portal is near the vascular bundle, which is why the anterocentral portal is rarely used. The portal should be made in the neutral position or in slight dorsiflexion to minimize risk of injury to the underlying structures. If they are not in the right spot, the case will be difficult. Make the incision through skin only, using blunt mosquito forceps in a nick and spread technique. Accessory portals, created under direct visualization, can be used when needed to optimize visualization and treatment. Occasionally, a 70-degree arthroscope can be helpful with visualization. Accessory portals can also be helpful for passing instruments or for outflow. An accessory anterolateral portal, located just anterior to the fibula and about one centimeter proximal to the tip of the lateral malleolus, is pictured here. Make the posterolateral portal 1.2 centimeters above the fibula in the soft spot next to the Achilles tendon. To establish the posterolateral portal, an 18-gauge needle is angled underneath the transverse ligament and through the notch of Hardy and visualized through the anteromedial portal. A posterolateral portal enables direct posterior viewing as part of the 21-point exam. To aid in the arthroscopic repair of the deltoid ligament, this accessory portal is located approximately 1.5 centimeters distal and anterior or oblique to the medial malleolus. Having clear visualization with 2.7 millimeter arthroscopes, commonly used with 4K definition, is key. Larger 4.0 arthroscopes can also be used. Smaller 1.9 millimeter arthroscopes to visualize the joint have the potential to make ankle arthroscopy less invasive and more accessible. An appropriate degree of inflow and outflow is important to maintain to ensure sufficient visualization, removal of tissues, while avoiding excessive suction, which may result in closure of the field of view. This can be accomplished by gravity drainage or an arthroscopy pump. Remember to monitor pumps to avoid extravasation. Appropriately sized handpieces can be used to introduce instruments into the joint. Additionally, Hand instruments like graspers and rajures provide access into the arthroscopic environment when more aggressive tissue removal is warranted. Regarding instrumentation, small percutaneous instruments can be used, including chondral picks, osteotomes, cup curettes, ring curettes, elevators, and probes. Finally, let's discuss examination of the ankle joint. A widely accepted approach 
developed by Ferkel and colleagues, is the 21-point exam, which looks at eight anterior points, six central points, and seven posterior points. The anterior and central points are viewable through anterior portals, and the posterior points require posterior ankle arthroscopy. With an appreciation of the intraarticular anatomy, here is an anteromedial portal view of a right ankle. First, looking at the deep portion of the deltoid ligament, coming around to the medial portion and the central overhang, and then laterally to the trifurcation, where we can look at the tibia, talus, and fibula, and at 45 degrees, the ATFL with its fascicles and the lateral and anterior gutter. To go from anterior to central, we use the notch of Hardy and this tunnel, which allows moving the instruments and scope safely without damaging the cartilage surface, for a more posterior view. Then, we look at the six central points, including portions of the talus, medially, centrally, and laterally at the synovium and the tibia. Then posterior to look at the PITFL, the transverse ligament, and the capsular reflection of FHL. If necessary, experienced surgeons can use a posterior lateral approach to further assess the posterior structures and complete a 21-point exam.